rolling hills near the San Mateo and Santa Cruz County coast are lovely and valuable. Their beauty is easy to see, but less obvious is its complex ecosystem that supports a wealth of wildlife and a way of life that's continued in these parts for generations. But all this beauty, open space, and ranch land was almost wiped away by plans for major development in the 1960s. 100,000 people were projected to be living in the Half Moon Bay area by 1990, and another 100,000 people were projected to be living in the Pescadero area by 1990. And there were gonna be all kinds of freeways linking the bay side to the coast side. Legal battles were waged, votes were cast, and eventually conservation groups such as Midpen and Post were able to preserve open space and local agriculture right here along the coast. It's very calming to me to be in a beautiful, quiet place like this. I think for a lot of people, when we think about protecting biodiversity and conservation, we tend to think of you know, mountaintops and, and old growth forests. And I think grasslands have often been a little bit overlooked. Grasslands are one of the most diverse and important habitats here along this stretch of the California coast. They may look sparse, but they are not. And the reality is that uh, they comprise a large portion of the surface of our planet and support a disproportionately large amount of the biodiversity. For example, in California, most of the species, uh, both plants and animals that are listed as rare or endangered, otherwise special status, occur in our grasslands. This is a very biologically rich area. There's a great diversity of birds that you're likely to observe here right now. Grassland birds and other animals, such as the endangered San Francisco garter snake and the elusive American badger, make their homes here. But missing from this landscape are the great herds that once roamed these hillsides, grazing the grass, fertilizing the soil, and churning the vegetation with their hooves. Grasslands are very disturbance-dependent plant communities, um, so grazing can provide that disturbance that, that uh, serves a lot of functions in the ecosystem. Fire, hooved animals, and grazing, these are all types of disturbance that grasslands need to open up vegetation. Plant litter accumulates over time in an undisturbed environment, can ultimately limit the amount of light exposure to live plant tissue underneath, so that, that periodic disturbance helps open up the thatch layer and promote growth. Cows have been providing that critical ecological disturbance. Midpen works closely with ranchers in the region to achieve its ecological management goals and allow agriculture to continue to thrive. It really is a collaborative relationship. For us, those ranchers, livestock operators, are providing a service to us as well in terms of using their animals to manage this landscape in a way that's conducive to the type of habitat management that we're trying to do. We have many separate pastures so that animals can be rotated out of one area to give it rest uh, in between periods of intermittent disturbance. And that's, that intermittent disturbance is what really helps us um, sort of uh, optimize the diversity that we can support out here on this landscape. This is called conservation grazing, and it's a win-win for everyone involved for the species who call these grasslands home, for the ecological stewardship of land that is protected and accessible to all of us, and for ranchers continuing agricultural traditions generations old. It's uh, more than what you can put into words in terms of the respect I have for not only Midpen, but every agency I work with, um, just to be able to be in the position where you can carry that tradition on. Alan Renz and other ranchers are able to pursue their traditional ways of life while Midpen scientists provide support by monitoring resources carefully and creating management plans so cattle, wildlife, nature, and we can all flourish together in an ever-changing environment. Adaptive management is a term we like to use in that it's a plan that's always changing as we um, learn new things about how um, our best management practices are working or not working um, and to better anticipate the changes in the future. Midpen monitors and manages many agricultural ponds scattered throughout its preserves, about a hundred ponds in all. 
even though they were created artificially in the past, they have since become extremely useful for supporting the recovery of certain wildlife species like California red-legged frog, for supporting our own conservation grazing program, um, and they're just beautiful to look at as you hike by. With a changing climate causing more drought, water held in these ponds has become increasingly precious. Midpen monitors these ponds very carefully. Temperature is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Midpen samples the ponds regularly to ensure they're healthy and serving nature in positive ways. We continuously monitor ponds like Lower Turtle Pond behind me uh, to make sure that recovery of wildlife is happening, managing invasive species is happening, and then we also try to anticipate the changes um, from climate change that have uh, much longer time scales over which we have to plan for and be able to predict and anticipate um, how water availability on the land is going to change. Predicting the future and the effects of climate change is not easy, but guided by science, Midpen is protecting and stewarding these grasslands to ensure they're thriving for wildlife, agriculture, and all of us for generations to come. I love being in natural environments. I'm also very intrigued and fascinated by the, the great diversity of life forms that occur here. And I feel really privileged to be in a position to help um, steward and take care of these places.